Hello, everyone. Hi, welcome. It's Lisa from Artist Palette. This is the four seasons trees that we are painting today. So I'm going to start with my supplies so you can get yourselves ready. You can skip ahead, you can pause, take your time throughout the video. So I have my primary colors and black and white and uh, for optional colors, just to mix a little bit easier is just having a burnt umber or a raw umber. So some sort of brown. So that is a great color to have instead of having to mix your own brown. I'll just put a little dab of that here. I'll show you how to make brown as well. Then you can have gold or uh, yellow ochre. So this is gold, yellow ochre. They very, they both look kind of gold. One actually, this actually looks more gold than this one. But, but anyways, you can have that as well. And let's see, anything else too? If you happen to have premixed colors that you have handy, then you can just build off of those. So some of the creamy orangey peach colors, if you happen to have orange or some sort of creamy peach, go ahead and use that. So a champagne, a champagne color can work as well. So here's what the champagne color looks like. It's very similar to this one. And then if you add more yellow and a touch of red, you get more of like that. Okay, so Let's get started. Oh, and I'll show you my brushes too. So for brushes, I recommend, uh, just for background stuff, you only need small ones. I'm using a small canvas, so eight by 10. It is probably a good idea to have something like this. So it's a, a bright or a flat brush, some sort of medium size. You can also use a round brush something a bit smaller for a round brush and I have a detailed brush as well so I dropped it but yeah here it is so you can have a couple detailed brushes okay these are what I recommend let's start with just sectioning off and a pencil might be helpful too I think a pencil is something that you can just use for sectioning off. I, a ruler is probably great. I happen to be lucky enough to have this, my previous canvas, to just go based off of that. So I could just go down from here and mark it off. So you, you just want to section off about four equal parts. So about a fourth of the way in, and then just keep it going. So about halfway is... This is the halfway point. So this is probably a better area to start off from is go down the middle and then just put a line in between halfway in between each section. So halfway in between from here to the end, put a line down the middle. And then from here to here, halfway down the middle here as well. Hopefully that makes it a lot easier. I see a lot of people who are, this is good, who like painting trees or just practicing trees, which is good. Okay, now that I've sectioned it off, I'm going to start with, you can use something like this, a flat brush, or you can use your round brush. You could try both and see how you like it. Let's just start from over here and just work our way kind of over. Um, the end and the beginning, so these two, autumn and winter, they have very similar background colors in the sky and you know the ground. So we may as well put a base coat for both of them. Some of them are slightly different, but to get started on our mixing palette, so if you have a separate palette, take a little bit of blue. A lot of this is pretty light, so a little bit of blue, and then you're taking a lot of this white, see, just to lighten it up and the tiniest dot of black. So it's like a, a shale blue in a way. So something like this, very, very light. 
my trick is to wash off the brush. If you accidentally took too much blue, just wash it off. You might waste your paint trying to match every single color and making it lighter is harder to do than making it darker. So there's the color. Let's test it out. Um, all you have to do is just go down right on the line or just inside the line. We'll just use the thin side. And as you can see, it's darker along the edges. So each little section has its own little frame. So it's darkest on the edges. And I'm just going to follow that. So I'm going to go down, follow it. And as you can tell as well, there's like a little horizon line where the sky sort of ends and where it goes and begins on the ground. So that you can put down here just for reference. So you can engulf this area. There's light little flicks. I like the rustic impressionist style. Bring it in and my trick, don't reload the brush, just take white and go right in the middle. Just let the paint sit. So don't over blend. That's how you get that really nice texture. and just fills in the center, kind of smooths it out on the edges. Pretty cool. And I also like to use this to keep it lighter with the snowy, it kind of gives it a fluffier light look at the bottom. Just kind of start filling it in down here. Use mostly, just keep taking your white because you still have a bit of that blue on your brush, so it still has a hint of blue and streak it side to side. Just short little flicks and streaks. Base fill. Okay, let's just do it again on the other side. So the other side, if you wanna slightly change the color, that's no problem. So if you don't want it to be just the exact same, if you want it to be um, a little bit more blue and less gray blue, feel free to just change it up. So maybe I'll add a touch more blue and some white. Keep it more like this. Or you can do some a bit of teal. You can, you can add a dot of yellow, tiny little dot, be careful. It turns green pretty quickly if you're not too careful. But anyways, I'm just giving you ideas. So you can take this, just go along the edges This one, I'm not going down here because I want the ground to be more red, right? So more like the like the autumn vibe at the bottom, the leaves have fallen. So I'm going to not go to the very bottom. You can go as low as you want to, keep it in line with this one or go a bit lower. And going around the edges. Just be free with it, okay? Also contrast is key. So that's why I just take white, didn't wash it off. And just do, just take a nice scoop of your white and fill in the middle without over blending and you get this texture. So I'll bring it up closer. And this is basically what I did for all of them. So when we switch colors in here, I just did the same thing like we did with the blue. You don't need to wash this off, take white and fill in the rest in the middle. So you do need to wash it off if you're a heavy handed painter, meaning if you take a lot, a lot of paint, it might just not work as well. So you have to take a little less paint sometimes. I'm still not washing this off. This painting is um, interesting because when I made it, I tried to recycle a lot of my colors. So I'm taking, let's just take more blue. Don't really want teal, I'm just gonna start over here. Blue, even though there's a bit of teal on my brush, don't mind it. Touch of black and just a little less white. So over here, we had a little extra darkness. And you can just wipe off some of the extra paint if you're a little bit afraid of how it's going to look and turn out. So you just go along the edge, it gives it a nice sharp look in between each section. And you can streak in and just kind of flick in. this dark color. I'm not going into 
this section here or in the middle just along the edges but very kind of random. I'm going to take a touch of water and this will help smooth things out if you find that it's a little bit too choppy and dry. So that's just a touch of water and see it gives it a little bit of a smoother color and don't forget white can be actually white is definitely your friend for this painting in terms of maybe just making things disappear, smoothing it out. Nice. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to use that same dark color. It was great. Only a dot of black. Be careful with black. Black is super powerful. Down at the bottom, I'm just going to do, you can use it more on the thin side down here. So you just like kind of like little sort of commas sweeping horizontally across. Just to give it some more darkness down here. Just think abstract, nothing perfect. And don't forget white. So you can wash off your brush if the white is not going as bright as you want. But just putting in the white here. And it's up to you how dark you really want to go. So more blue and black will give it even more darkness. You can always accent that around the border. So if you're using a bigger canvas, this might be a little bit easier to do too. Okay. So I have something like this. I think I'm good with that. It's not overly blended. Now I'll probably just wash off the brush. Although not needed because you can do the exact same thing on this side. We'll bring this up a bit closer and we'll also do the other side. Yep, you can, so if people are wondering, you can watch this anytime on repeat on replay and you can say where you're tuning in from. I like to see where people are tuning in from. I'm in Canada, Durham region, just outside Toronto. I see some people tuning in from Oakville, maybe some other places, feel free to say. Okay, so on this side, just in the sky, you can take a similar gray blue or you can just take um, more straight blue. So I'm just gonna add more blue into this spot here. Maybe a dot of black. Let's see how we feel about that. It's pretty blue. I'm gonna take a dot more black and a touch of white. Oh, and you can actually take a dot of red too. It will, it will mute your blue just a bit. It's not going to be purple. So that was dot of red. I'm going to go down almost to, so this is more of the red section. So my sky, the blue stuff, ends right about there. Sweep it in. See how they're kind of really gentle swishes. Gentle switches. I'm going to, I'm actually going to wash this off because it had a lot of that paint in there. And I'm going to use white. And then this can smooth it out. Just white. So this is one of those paintings where um, the reason it looks so, kind of looks a bit complex, but also simple at the same time, it's the little things. For example, gold or anything that looks like gold. Like I showed you, I had gold, I had 
um, what are these? Uh, yellow ochre, and also raw sienna looks a bit like gold too. Take note of that. If you have gold, you can just make and add a little sparkle to your painting. This is gold that I put down, very metallic and sparkly. You can add a little streak of gold in with your blue. Blue and gold, they look really nice. If you're trying to make a little bit of a gold, it's just really making brown. Yellow and red, a little bit of each, probably a touch more yellow than red. It's just a little bit of black, so you have a brown, and then you're adding a bit of white. it looks a bit like a raw sienna, more yellow if you want it more yellowy gold looking. And just wiping off a little paint. So see, you can just add a little bit of that in here. You can also just complement some of the blue at the top, but just a little bit, or maybe a bronze if you want to put bronze. some sort of ideas and this is just white if you want to blend it back out if you like that addition go ahead and add it if not you can think about it for later or just go over it again when it's dry too All right, so um, now what we can do, let me wash that off. We can make the middle colors and a bit more warmer vibe. Start over here, a nice creamy, almost champagne color. I'm just pulling white to the side. A nice scoop of white. A little, just a couple dots of red. And you get pink. And what makes it look nice and champagne creamy is a little bit of yellow. Oops, I touched some. That's okay, I don't mind touching a bit of brown or gold. Probably enhances the color. So more red if you want more pink. And you have to just add a bit more white to balance it out. So the more you add color, the darker it's gonna start getting. When you add more white, it starts going back to that light cream. And whenever you feel like you've made the color that you like, just stick with it. So let's, let's use something like that. And I'm just going to basically outline the whole thing. Go right up carefully to my blue. Streaking it in. Also, I'm going to put some at the bottom. I think I wanted a bit more pink as well. Not, not overly, but just a little. So I've filled up more of the bottom. You can go more horizontally, side to side, short little streaks, same sort of technique. You haven't really changed up the technique here.
remember, white. Don't need to wash off the brush. Make sure your brush is not overly coated with that paint. You can fill in the middle. Go from the middle outwards. I let that dry. I like the background sky to be a little bit of a light blue, but you don't have to. You don't have to do as much as I'm doing. You can keep it a bit more simple as well. I am adding a touch more red. I want it to be slightly more pink and a touch more yellow, just a little bit deeper, because it's a bit of a deeper color, sort of getting towards the coral side. Just on the edges. And just down here, same type of thing. Short little flicks, almost like commas down here, like we did over here, but not too high up. A little bit less. Still using a little bit of that darker color, accenting the sides. Touch more red and yellow if you want it darker. And you can just outline this more in a deeper color. Okay, so I'm not trying to overdo it as well. I think I have, yeah, I think I have a good amount. This is just white. Cool. So I'll bring this up closer so you can see all of that texture up close, all the brush strokes as well. Now let's go to the more orange, sort of gold side. Washing your brush is not too necessary because we're gonna build off the same color. I'm gonna take more yellow. So another scoop of yellow, no more red. You can also add in a bit of gold if you want it to be more golden. More yellow. I am taking a touch more red just because I want it to still be orangey looking. So if it's looking a bit too yellowy, touch more red is all you need. Okay, with this section, for the most part, yes, you can do your little outline. I'm just following that up gently. Okay. And as I fill this in, I'm just getting this light color filled in from the sides. I'm going to leave it a bit more greenish at the bottom. A little bit down here, but not all the way down. And you can get a bit of a base coat down here too, side to side, which is okay. But in the sky, it's a bit more green. You could just leave it this color and not do the green background. I'm taking a bit, just a little bit of blue, white. Blue, white, pea size, yellow. And I'm going to take more white. I want it to be super light, almost a light minty color. Pretty cool. 
wiping off a lot of paint. So that white helps give it a more softer, minty sort of look. And I'm just going to brush it in just a little bit on the sides here, kind of going up and down. Towards the middle. And then you can use, wash it off, you can use white just to fill into the, the rest of the middle like we did before. So white paint. Just go right in between and go up into your orange to do that lighter spot in the middle. This is gold, which is an option to add. I'm gonna add a bit more. I'm gonna go a bit darker. So no more white, yellow, and just a touch of red. Gives it more of a deeper orange instead of the, the cream light orange that we made. So always add a touch more red if you want it to be a little bit more on the red, darker side, and less yellowy. This is where you can enhance the edges. First, right on the sides, and then anywhere else. Just bringing it in just a little bit. Light little flicks, little commas, I think almost leafy. Maybe some down here, sure. There we go. Okay, so I've washed this off. Now you can do any adjustments you want to. Maybe if you want to add a little bit of light blue in the sky over here, that's okay. Anything else? Maybe you need to do a second coat of white in some of the middles. You want it a little bit brighter overall. That's fine. So that was just a little bit of white over there. You can do, let's see over here. Oh yeah, the blue, so white and a dot of blue, tiniest dot of blue. I want it to be very subtle because I don't want it to be too dark when I put my cherry blossoms on top. This is just with a little bit of blue. So if you like it, Mostly white, a little bit of blue, fill in most of the area right to down here before it hits the ground or just as it hits the ground. A little extra touch of white. Okay, so after this, now we can start putting in where our trees are going to sit. And I put in a little bit of some background distant trees. I actually like to use the same brush, that same flat one, because I can just use a thin line and bring it up. So starting over here. We're just using, it's very monochromatic. So in each section, you're pretty much taking a similar color to what we just used. And in my case, over here, I just took a darker blue-gray. So similar to also what you put on the edges, if you happen to have that or want to make it again. So it's like this color right here. Touch of white, blue, 
dot or two of black. So it's not ultra, ultra dark, it's just darker. And maybe I'll just start kind of just along where I want the ground to be. I'm gonna go up and you can do some little branching off. Maybe just like a thin little stick, doesn't have to be perfect. A couple little trees. You do have a detailed brush, hopefully, and you can always do this with your detailed brush. You can just press a bit harder, make it a little bit wider at the bottom for your trees. And I'm going to wash this off here. So if you did a little bit too dark or anything like that, just drown it out with a bit of white. Right? White can help. whatever so I am using my detailed brush I want to use um, you can use a dark brown or a black black is simple black is easier if you're doing dark brown grab your dark brown or just take about equal parts yellow and red, maybe a touch more yellow, a touch of black, maybe two, because you want it nice and dark. So I'm just going to deepen it up with some black, no white. So it's like a chestnut brown. A little bit of water, just twirling my brush in here to keep it pointy and thin on the end. And I'm going to plant it down here. So I'm just going to go. First, you can start with a sort of stick, and then I sort of just go up and over to the side. I'll go a little bit wider over here, down at the bottom. Bring it up and then go nice and thin towards the top. So somewhere up in this section, start branching out and going outside to do its little thing. Try not to think too hard about the direction, except I want it to be pretty interesting. You will branch off and do something up here, filling up all of the space. You can add a little bit of white towards the top if you want it a bit softer. So just add a bit of white. And then, oops. So that's a bit of white added. Go close to the top. It looks like it's got more of a fade, not as harsh like the dark brown. And I'm mostly just making some little branches to fill up in the middle taking up a lot of the space that it's in its little section. Branching off. Doing some fun twists and turns, not doing too many straight sticks that they all have soft little bends to them. Kind of gnarly too. I'll just branch because it's empty here. I'll branch off and put in some branches, little sticks coming out. You can also overlap. And you'll have a branch going over, invading the space over on the side. So 
so that light brown. So if you add whites or if you want to add gold to your brown, even bronze, bronze is a great color. You can highlight just up one side. Okay, just from the bottom here, do a couple little streaks going up. And you don't need to necessarily follow it to the top because they're pretty thin overall, unless you want to. A couple sticks over here because it's lacking some. So that light brown, I definitely kept towards the very top. I'm just going over some of them just to brighten it up, or you can add some more to fill in the space without it being too obvious. Just at the top. These are my background trees, but you can take your blue gray and just put a couple of little, because at the bottom you need to make it look like it's a bit more grounded. I just take my detail brush and take my blue gray, something kind of darker. And I just add almost like just more texture and clumpy sort of snowy bits. And add some white to give it more white snow highlight. So I could just put a clump of white snow just below it as well. And now the tree looks a little bit more grounded down there. You can also use brown, but dark brown. Put some just more of a stump coming down. Bring this up close, just off to the sides. It gives it also a bit of a shadow. It's nice for the depth. Okay. So I won't add flowers until it's a bit more dry. We can start, let me see. This one, you can start the background trees for the cherry blossom side. And just put a little bit of stuff on the bottom here. Detailed brush again. Washed it off. Um, in terms of the background trees, take you can take one of your darker pink colors with a touch of yellow, right? So kind of like a coral color. Or you can take your coral color and add some gold to it. So this is some gold. Remember Ra Sienna looks a bit like gold or yellow ochre. Mm -hmm. Just gonna put in some sticks coming up, maybe a branch. No one's paying attention to the background trees. That's not the whole point of this. It's just a filler. It's just to add more depth and complex, just some complexity added. Um, but I'm not trying to make a full on tree. I'm just doing a makeshift tree of stuff. And that's all it really needs because it gives it, that's it. That's just, it's just the depth. That's all I really care about. All right. So once you have this color you can just um, you can go over any outlines you want to go over 
just add more red to your color. And then um, in terms of the tree, I like to put it on last because it's overlapping this one and this one a little bit, especially the leaves. Uh, at the bottom, you can use this gold or like a tree color to add in some more little commas at the bottom here. Okay, so we'll come back to that one. Now going to this tree. Well, not really a tree yet. So this section where the tree is gonna be, I'm putting in a bit of a darker green. So not too dark, but more of a darker green. Quite honestly, if I mix right on top of this or add some gold and or add some gold to it, so you can use your peachy cream, pinky color and just add a little bit of yellow and a touch of blue. You get a fun earthy green. I'm going to add a little bit of white. Don't need it so dark. It's a little bit of an earthy green. Touch of water. And I'm just going to do my sort of sticks. Maybe some little ones towards the center. green sticks put as many branches as you want but I think just a couple are good um, after this there's nothing wrong with using that cream peach color like we used before so red and yellow with some white and gold kind of recycle into here Just below the trees if you want to add in more of that. I'm just kind of flicking it up into the trees. But anyways, um, same sort of color I had over here. Or from your sky, you put it a little bit on the ground. You can add gold if you want to. So below, um, I put some of that green, the same green, towards the bottom where the tree is going to be. So little commas, almost like you're making some fallen leaves and a kind of reflection or reflective colors. Anyways, it looks nice. Put some of that at the bottom. You'll see it has a lot of also brown after I do the tree. So there's the green. I'll show you a bit closer and then we'll start with the dark brown again, making our tree. All right. Dark brown, some water. How complex is this painting? Sometimes a challenge is good. And I'm on an eight by 10. Super small, so it's even bigger challenge. All right, so let's go down into the green part. So it's just not from here, but a little bit lower. And again, I'm gonna start with a kind of like a straight stick up the middle. 
We don't really see where it ends. We just know that it makes like a cone shape for the leaves. So I'm going to make it a little bit wider at the bottom. So all I'm doing is just widening for a trunk, just making it a bit thicker, just on each side. and then it gets thinner towards the top. And we're going to be adding leaves somewhere around here. You can add branches after you put the leaves, so coming up into the leaves. Or you can add some now, but you know, just be careful that you don't lose them. You can always add them back in too. Not a huge deal. There, something like this, so that when I put my leaves in that cone shape, There you go, we can still see a little bit at the bottom. I'm going to use my light brown. Remember we added some white to it. You can, you can also add some gold to it. Or more yellow and red if it's a bit grayish. So if you're trying to balance out too much black and it looks a bit gray, or yellow and red makes it orangey brown again. Just go on the side. Lots of, you can even just take white and it'll pick up your brown and make it lighter. Just go up a bit. There, you get a bit of a highlight. I'm going to use my medium brush. You can use the detailed brush still. You can go back to your dark brown and sweep in some of this brown. I'd like to start a little bit at the bottom. Just kind of go along the sides. Go along the bottom, use the thin side, and add in that nice little cluster of earthiness. Go right up to the tree so it looks like it's a bit more blended in. Let some of the green still show. So if you want to go back to green, go back to green so you can bring it back in. But that's all it really needs. Or a little bit of gold. Okay, so now we go to over here. I didn't put any background trees, but feel free to put whatever you want in the background. If you want to do like this, some bluish ones in the background, you can do that. But to fill in the bottom, you can use your medium. A good base coat is probably just more of a, a lighter orange. Um, maybe don't start with straight red. I kind of use similar colors that I used over here. So a bit of um, a creamy orangey color. So yellow and red. I didn't think really too hard about it. It depends on if you want to go more orange on that side or more red, you can add a touch more red. Well, I, I did go more red on that side. So I just put this in first at the bottom. So start from the very bottom, go upwards. And as I get closer to the blue, it doesn't just stop, it just fades. So I wash it off, take some white, and then let it lightly fade up into your blue so it's a bit more pleasant and blended, kind of more airy. So 
So hopefully it's going pretty well. It's coming along. I'm just going over this line with my blue and a touch of black. Great. Now we can start the tree and then I put in some deep orange and red sitting at the bottom of the tree. Go back to your dark brown. Bit of water. So a little bit, you can go further down. I just went a little bit further up, somewhere around here. It's, a lot of the trees are actually in line with each other. So this seems like a good spot. Start with more of a stick and then it just sort of goes its own little direction. So it's not just straight up. Just a little bit off to the side. And um, it does go pretty high up. So it does go off to the side. Uh, back into the middle and kind of just almost touching close to the top. See, just barely touching. Taking a bit of paint and just branching off, trying to make similar to a dead tree over here. And make it a bit wider down here too, like I have before. Okay, so maybe as I get up there, I'm just going to start making my own little branches. up and kind of stay within the vicinity, stretching out almost to the edges of the section where it's contained in. Branch coming up over here. Use a touch of water with your paint. Those middle branches I have, let's just start branching out a bit more off to the side, kind of making more of a Y shape, just branching outwards. After you put leaves on this tree, you can always add more branches. It's actually a pretty easy thing to do. So there's a tallest point pretty much in the middle. And from here, up to you how many branches you want to put out. After I do the leaves, I'll think about maybe adding more or putting some on top of the leaves so you can still see. But yeah, I think this is good for the moment. Then you can highlight light brown again or just some white. You can also just highlight with orange, um, yellow, red, and a touch of white, because it's like just the same colors down here. Kind of looks, I think it looks nice. Okay. If you have a pre-mixed orange, great. Don't add white to your orange here. Three parts of two parts yellow and one part red. You get a deeper orange. 
So yeah, maybe two parts yellow, one part red. Deeper orange, it's almost a blood orange too. I'm gonna go streak just along the bottom of the tree. Don't mind that I'm picking up the brown, it actually enhances my color and I like it. And put a little couple flicks just all over. Very leafy. Before I put in some red. Taking straight red. Didn't wash the brush. Straight red. Put it next to the tree. Go into the tree. Give it a deeper shadow. And I didn't cover the whole thing. I let some of that orange show. Even if you add a touch of black to your red, you can give it a just a bit of a shadow. Just some deep, dark red. I personally like to, if it's a bit too harsh, just take a touch of white. You can wash it off. And you can break it up a little bit just so you have some highlights in here. Keep it a little bit softer overall. You can also just do white and yellow as a way to lighten it up. Kind of looks like you have all the fall colors anyways. See, that's yellow and white. And it looks like you have a lot of fall leafy colors on the, on the ground. There. Okay, so what we do is we go back to this one and this one. We put the leaves on the tree, so we can start with this one and then put the leaves here, and then we'll work on putting our tree in here. Do the leaves over here, and these ones, the leaves are last. Okay. In terms of leaves for this tree, you can do a couple. You can either do the flat brush or the round one. I'm just starting with white. Uh, do I want to start with white? Um, you know what? Let's do white afterwards. Might see it better with a bit of gold instead. You can take your gold or your yellow ochre or raw sienna. And then you can just use the corner of your brush and just kind of blob it in. Okay, just like light, almost just like little flicks, almost like these, or maybe little dots. If you do a, a lot more on one side than the other. So if you're trying to also make this color, Showed you before you want to start with a brown but you don't want too much black you actually want it more orangey yellow touch of black so if you actually just take your orange and then add in some white you get like a golden looking color you have to take if you add more black it starts turning a bit more brownish but also if you take too much black, it will start looking just black and like gray instead of warm gold. A bit more white too is nice if you want it even brighter. See, it's just the same color except without the metallic. Okay, so I have that stuff there. So that was with my, I use my uh, medium brush, but also you can use this brush. I'm just taking plain white and now I'm going to start blobbing like little dots here my detail brush just on top or next to that gold color sometimes they're smaller sometimes i smush it in and make them a little bit bigger or closer together see sometimes they just 
go together, not too spaced out. You want more clustered. I think I clustered it more right in the middle here. A little bit further away, smaller on the left side. Something like that. And I just use a generous amount of paint so they sit with a lot of texture on my canvas. So I'll bring it up closer. Just little blobs. Little tiny blobs. The gold, I think, helps enhance that. But you can also use this gold or brown. You just you can use a brown to like kind of dot in the middles to give them more of a flowery sort of look. Even at the end, you can dot in some of the centers with your gold or brown paint. Tiny little dots in the center. All right. Now let's do this tree. We're going to use, um, let's do more of a darker green and then go to a lighter green. Okay. I'm going to use my medium. In the same orangey spot, or you can mix it in a bit of brown, some blue, scoop of yellow. Bit more yellow than blue. Actually, if you like it teal, you can you can put a bit more blue, like half and half. If you more if you want a more teal, foresty green, then just do equal parts. Add in a bit of white. I think I'm gonna add a bit more blue. There we go. Great. That's what I want. Wiping off a little excess because and when you mix it on top of like orange or brown. It stays, it doesn't stay as vibrant. It goes like muted and softer. So what you can do down here is you just go up a little bit higher first. I'll lightly tap and just go all, like basically to the end of each end. A little bit less in the middle. So it has a little bit of a, sort of just a flat line. It kind of looks like it's just sort of ending a little bit down lower with some tiny little dots. And then I'm going to go up the middle here and just lightly go out a little bit to meet each corner. Generous amount in the middle. Um, before, okay, so you can wash this off. You can switch to your detailed. So some blue and some white if you want it to still be a bit more teal, bluish. And go right along the edge to just lighten it up. I'm going to take a bit more white. And now we can just make it a little bit less controlled in terms of it's a perfect triangle or cone. A little bit off to the side, so just kind of sort of coming in a little bit from that shape, like little touches towards the middle. And then same with the other side. A little bit more white, lighter at the top, basically. A little bit towards the middle. I like to take yellow and white. Didn't wash it off. And you can 
So mostly white. And just like lightly flick off to the sides without making it look like it's getting too wide. So you can go a little bit outside that triangle on the left. Just let it be a bit more highlighted over here. And even towards the top. So some enhancements can be the black added to your green. So black added to your green. And maybe just a little bit more blue. See right in the middle. You can add in a little bit more of that shadow. Uh, if you like your tree the way it is, don't add too much. Just a little option. That's just even more black if you want it even darker. Even the bottom of the tree is probably a good idea to shadow as well. Washing this off. Okay. And if you're ever in doubt, you need to take away white. You can add little highlights of white if you want it to be even more brighter. But just be careful. Don't want to overwork it. I like. I just like that contrast. It's pretty cool. And I can still see my branches, but if you need to, you just go back in with your dark brown, and you just put in some branches again. And probably with your detail brush, you can just go up into your tree a bit so you can see it disappear somewhere up in, somewhere along the bottom. After this, I'm going to start my cherry blossom tree, and then we're going to put the leaves on the autumn tree. Just using the same sort of dark brown. Touch of water. And about in line with the rest of my trees. Just adding some darkness just along the bottoms and the sides, just all on the right sides. Gives it an extra nice little shadow. Okay, so right about here. I'm going up and maybe just kind of keeping it sort of straight while not perfectly straight, so kind of wobbly. I have some of my branches start starting even kind of lower, but 
not all the way down here, just up a little bit. And I'm just doing a little point out here. I'm going into the green section just a little bit. Taking up a lot of space. Definitely how I'm pretty sure dogwood takes up a lot of space, pretty wide. And I'm going to work my way up. So here, go just keep branching out. But one thing with the branches too, the way that if I were to go around the edges of my branches, it makes kind of like a, almost a circular shape, like a dome. See? Just like that. So when you're doing it, try to keep that in mind so they're not like one side's going all the way over here. It's all sort of symmetrical in a way, nice and like a Y shape going out and then a little bit more narrow at the top. And they're not perfect branches. So sometimes you're not going to see, you don't need to make them all continuous. They can have little breaks in the branches because there's leaves covering them, that kind of thing. And just a little bit of a peak towards the top. Then we'll put cherry blossoms just all over and going a little bit into the adjacent little rectangles. Okay, so while that, oh, and of course we want to do with some light brown bit of a highlight. All right. Okay. There. Let's do the leaves on our autumn tree. So I, I kind of started with uh, more of an orangey color, and I did a bit of shadow and highlight. I like my medium flat square. So back into my orange section, bit of red and yellow. Two parts yellow, one part red. Touch of white, but not too much. Okay. And then, actually I'm going to add a touch more red and some white. I don't mind the pink. Anyways, you can use orange, you can use a slightly pinky color. But yeah, it's pretty orange, good. I'm just going to do a couple little dabs. 
And I'm trying to be a little strategic because I want it to not cover the whole tree. I want to make it look like it's actually just falling off in parts. <laughs> so it's a lot down towards the bottom, like all of this area. And a little, almost less than nothing at the top. Wash this off here. Needs a little accent of deep red. Let's just red and a touch of black. And what I did, like little with the corner, just little sort of commas, some kind of looking like they're falling down. But a nice scoop of this just at the bottom. So you can go right over top of some of your orange to really enhance that shadow. And maybe a little break. There's a little gap, so maybe a little bit up here too. I'm gonna let that sit for a minute because if I add a highlight, it just it might start looking a bit too brownish. So I let that sit. I can also use my dark brown to revive a little bit of my branches. Or add new ones. I'm just going over on a couple of them. And if I want to show any towards the top, I can very carefully add some. So while I wait for that, I will put in some of the fallen leaves at the bottom here. You can do a bit of that. So red and a touch of black or more of a shadowy look down here. I'm going to take one more little touch of black. No yellow. I'm just kind of this right in front. A little bit below, off to the side. You can also put in a bit of an outline just to sharpen up on the edge a smidge. Okay, washing this off. Red and black kind of. It sort of looks a bit purpley, so it's a nice little color. Red and a little bit of white, so you want a pink. I put a bit of this pink in the mix with this. Really nice and soft. Or just more white too. Cool. So now I can put the cherry blossoms on the tree, engulfing a little bit more in the area just around it. Okay, in terms of color, feel free to just do a super light dogwood sort of look. Um, mostly white, just a touch of red. You can add a tiny touch of yellow if you want slightly just blush, you know, looks a bit blush. 
So that's a blush color. And you can just, you can do a little bit of this and then do the rest pink. Anyways, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do see, a little bit kind of overlapping on each side. White in the middle where it's coming out here. It's the whitest part. And then it kind of goes a little bit less down towards here. It's covering all the little spots. And I do go over my branches once it's done. And go and peek it up here. A little bit wider over here. Just kind of spaced out a little bit. For the most part, it's pretty filled in. Still some of the middle right here, not really covered, just around that. Okay, I'm going to add a touch more red now. Let's do a little bit more red. Okay. Maybe a touch of yellow. Going over the same spots. I'm going to take straight red on my brush. I didn't wash it. A little bit inwards. Working a little bit further in, not as far out. It's starting to get a bit deeper in color. going to wash this and do a bit of that red and black. Red and a touch of black. This looks like a dark red. Like this one down here. Definitely want something like that. I'm going more into the very centers. Just a nice little blob of paint. It's like you're making that shadow that we did over here in the green tree. So you can use a bit of your blush pink or any of your red to make it look like some leaves are sort of falling down. Another idea is you could, if you wanted, add in some red orange for like apples in this tree. Or just gold, you put gold so it looks sort of like apples. Just little circles in the center, that's it. So before I go over my branches, I want that to sit and dry. red for any touch-ups you can do any touch-ups 
in the center. I like it nice and concentrated with that deep red. All right, and then I'm going to go to this tree. Put in some highlights and some light orange. Yellow and some white. Sitting towards the tops. I'm going to take some yellow and a touch of red, give it a light orangey just look. And you can revive any little spots. Okay, a couple of fallen leaves. And that red with a touch of black. Mostly just red. Help enhance and deepen. So we have all those fall colors, a little bit of shadow sitting at the bottom here where all the leaves are kind of gathered. Yeah, I think that's all I need to do. A little bit of browning is okay because in fall it does this, it just has a little bit of browning. And someone's saying that the first two remind you of Narnia, which I am a Narnia fan. So. Okay, uh, let's go back here. You can use your dark brown or you can actually just use black. I don't mind black. So I want to go back over these, my branches with a touch of water. I do like to show my branches over top. They don't all have to be super consistent. They can have little breaks in them like I was saying before. If you lost your branches, just make it up. Could have just done it without having to put branches first but honestly i think it just helps with guiding you when you put your leaves Thanks, Vicky. You want to come in? Someone was also saying there's an Edward Scissorhands vibe to the orange, which is pretty cool. Okay. It's hard to know when to stop, like when you feel like you have enough branches or if you need to keep going. But I think 
you just have to step back, see if it needs anything, if it needs more. I am adding a white highlight on my cherry blossom or dogwood tree. You can, um, we love seeing results. You can show us in the um, Facebook group under Artist Palette Durham. So you can go to the acrylic support group, show us your interpretation. And you can say like what kind of trees you think they are. Like this one, I was going for cherry blossoms, but also I know dogwood looks a lot like this too. This is kind of like an apple tree, although probably not shaped entirely like that. But it looks good when you paint it. Sometimes little tweaks and fantasy can make a nice little painting. Okay. So we're almost there. We just have to do well, any little highlights that you want to add. You can put some more yellow at the bottom here. You can add some gold as your little finishing touches. I think I'm going to finish up with the white on my cherry blossom tree on the spring side. So I'm just taking white paint. You can also add in some white, sometimes white just to break up some color, especially in the bottoms here. We'll add a nice little touch. A little blob of paint. And then just on the outside. So you're, um, it's not so much on this side. It's more on the parts that we're highlighting. Caution you putting this on top of black because it will just turn gray. But if it's dry, perfect. And I don't mind going right over my branches because that's what leaves do sometimes. it pops it out a lot more too. There's the white. Okay. I'm just thinking, is there anything else that I really want to add? Don't think so. Don't think also playing around with it is always <laughs> something you should avoid to not try to do too much of. However, I keep talking about gold and um, I just really think that gold is a nice little added sparkle into any oranges, browns. This is just gold on my brush. Pinks. So hopefully you had fun painting along with me. And it wasn't too difficult. I'm sure if you used any bigger canvas than I did, it wasn't too bad. Painting on 8x10 is a little bit of a challenge, but it was fun. Okay, so I can't wait to see results. Please do share. Tell me what you thought, if it was hard, if it was easier than you thought. I personally thought this was a bit of a challenge just because of the size and because of all these colors, but I think it pays off. I think it's pretty awesome. I just love the Four Seasons vibe and I had to do a Four Seasons painting. Maybe you'll paint along with me again. You can check out our website, artistpalettedurham.com and see what's coming up. On our YouTube, we have lots of free tutorials that we've taught that you can watch anytime on replay. There's like hundreds. Okay, thank you guys. Bye.